All right, 3.2, we're gonna be finding limits graphically and numerically. So graphically, our graphs are gonna kinda of look similar to what we did in the last section where we had um, rational functions, so fractions. And numerically, we're gonna use a table. So our calculator is gonna help us with both of that. Come time for the test and quiz, you're not gonna be able to use a calculator, but in 3.3, we're gonna learn how to do this without a calculator. So 3.2, we're gonna kind of just understand like what a limit is, use our, our calculator to help us find it, and then we're gonna kind of figure it out algebraically in the next section. So it says, suppose you're asked to sketch a graph of the function of f given by this. So first thing we'd wanna ask ourselves, do we have any common factors? Well, how can we factor x cubed minus 1? What does it factor into? It's the difference of cubes. So when we factor the difference of cubes, it'd be a b, a squared, a b, b squared. Anybody know what the signs that go in it would be? Or what's the acronym that we use to remember the signs for perfect cubes? a little word to help us remember the signs. Anybody heard of soap? Yeah. So same signs would be minus, plus, same, opposite, always positive. So minus, plus, plus. So when we factor out that x cubed minus 3, it would factor into x minus 1, x squared, plus x plus 1 over x minus 1. So do we have any common factors? x minus 1. So we have a whole at x is equal to 1. But in our domain, what can x not equal? So for our original graph, our original function here, what could x not equal in our domain? x does not equal 1. Can't have 0 in the denominator. So if we were asked to find f of 1, could we find f of 1? Nope, it's undefined. It's not part of our graph. It's not in our domain. Does not exist. So the idea of limits is we're going to be asked to find, as x approaches 1, what is our graph going to be? What would our y be as x goes to 1? So it's kind of like the same idea as holes, but a little bit different. So this is kind of the idea of limits. We're talking about how our graph looks at that value, even though it doesn't exist at that value. So to get an idea of the behavior of the graph of f near x equals 1, you can use two sets of x values, one set that approaches 1 from the left and one that approaches 1 from the right, as shown in the table. So we can take these values and plug them in. There's actually kind of a shortcut that we can use in our calculator, so this is where our calculator comes in handy. So in your calculator, you're going to click the y equals button. And in our y equals, for y1, you're going to put our original function. So that was x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. Be careful when you're putting in rational functions into your graph for your calculator. Since you're dividing, I would put the top in parentheses and put the bottom in parentheses. So we're going to put our whole function into that y1 equals. Next in our calculator, we click second table set, the TBLSET table set. In that, you want to make sure that where it says the independent, you're on ask 
And for the dependent, you're on auto. So you gotta change the settings there. And then you're gonna click second, table. So different button, second, table. In this box, you'll put in all your values. So in the X column, you're gonna put 0.75. When you put 0.75, it gives you 2.31. When we put 0.9, it gives us 2.71 put 0.99, it gives us 2.97. If you put 0.999, it gives us 2.997. If you put in one, it says error. Because we said f of one is undefined. Our graph does not exist at one. So that's why it gives us an error. If we put 0 0.001, you get 3.003. .003. If you put 1.0, you get 3.03. 1.1 gives us 3.31. And 1.25 gives us 3.81. So what we're looking for is to see if our graph approaches the same number from the left and from the right. If these are the same number, that number is our limit. So does our graph approach the same number from the left and from the right? Is it getting closer and closer to a number? Yeah, what number is it getting closer and closer to? Three. So if this is the same number, Bless you. That is the limit. So we would say the limit as x approaches 1 of our function, so our function was x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. This equals 3. On the next page, it shows the graph of our function. So here we see that we had a hole. So the idea of a limit is how does your graph look? So even though it, our graph does not exist, when x is 1, our graph from the left side approaches 3, and from the right side approaches 3. So that would be our limit. So in limit notation, we'd say the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals 3. So this is just how we would read a limit. So the limit of our function as x approaches 1. So it kind of talks about the definition of a limit. So as you get arbitrarily close to a single number, as x approaches that number, x approaches your constant from either side, that would be your limit. So you're talking about what you're getting close to. So even though our graph didn't exist at this value, what is the value as we get really, really close to it? So we're going to do the same thing in example one. We're going to put this in our calculator. So once you put your function in, your table set, the settings, should already be good. It should just save from the last one that we did. So then we're going to go to second table, and then we're going to put these values in. So we'll put negative 0 0.01 because it's asking us as our limit approaches zero. So we want to put numbers less than zero and numbers greater than zero, getting closer and closer to zero. So point zero one, negative point zero one would give us one point nine nine five. Negative point zero zero one would be point nine nine. Oops, sorry, one point nine 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 five. 
and then negative 0 0.0001 would be 1.9999. So we get an idea of what we're getting closer to on the left side. Let's see what we approach from the right side too. So in the calculator, now I'm going to put positive 0 0.0001. So that gives us 1.001. Oops, sorry, that gives us two. I was looking at the wrong thing. That would give us two. Point zero zero one would be two point zero 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 five. And then point zero one would be two point zero zero five. So as we're coming from the left side and as we're coming from the right side, what number are we getting close to? What are we approaching from the left side? What are we, what, two. And from the right side, we're approaching two also. So since they approach the same value, our limit as x approaches zero would be two. Next page just shows us what our graph looks like. So if we were to graph this, as x approaches 0 from the left side and as x approaches 0 from the right side, our graph is getting closer and closer to 3. So our y value of our graph gets closer and closer to 3. So in example 1 and in the first example we did, notice how the limit or the value that it asked us to plug in, so the x value, didn't exist in our graph. If we plugged it in, it would have given us 0 in the denominator. The limit doesn't care if it exists or doesn't exist. So it says, this often happens, and it has no importance to realize that the existence or non-existence of f of x at x equals c has no bearing on the existence of the limit. So even though... If we found f of, in that last one, f of 0, and it did not exist, that does not mean our limit's not going to exist. So sometimes this will happen where, most of the time actually, it'll happen where if you plugged in that number, it's not going to be a value, it does not exist, it'll be undefined at that value. That doesn't mean that our limit's going to be undefined. However, we will have limits that don't exist. So in example three, here, our graph, looking at it graphically, our x values as we go towards zero, our y value here is one. As we go towards zero, our y value down here would be negative one. Since these approach different numbers, our limit does not exist. So if your graph from the left side and from the right side approach a different y value, then your limit does not exist. However, we could break this up and ask for the limit of x, the absolute value of x over x. As x approaches 0 from the negative direction, so I could specify my limit. So as x approaches 0 from the negative direction, what do you think our limit would be here? Negative 1. So as we approach from the negative direction from the left, our graph gets closer and closer to negative 1. We can say the same thing. The limit of the absolute value of x over x as x approaches 0 from the positive direction as we approach zero from the positive direction from the right side, what would our y value be? One. So we could break our limits up into two separate ones. So we're gonna do all of them together. So starting with the first one. We have the limit of x minus one over x squared minus one as x approaches one. So we can do this graphically if you want to graph it or we can put it in our calculator and do the box we can find our values as x approaches one so we're looking for one in the middle so we want to plug in numbers that are a little bit bigger than one 
So we'd have 1.001, you can plug in 1.01 and 1.1. And then numbers that are just a little bit smaller than one, so like 0 0.999, 0 0.99, and 0.9. So let's put this into our calculator. So if I put it in my calculator, I'm gonna make sure I put parentheses around the top and the bottom just to be super sure that my graph knows what exactly is on top, what exactly is on the bottom. All right, so when I put my values in, if I put 0.9 in, I get 0 0.526. 0.99 gives me 0 0.5025. 0 0.999 would give me 0 0.5003. One gives us undefined. It doesn't work. We'd get an error. When I put 1.001, I get... 0.4998. If I put 1.01, .01, I get 0.4975. And 1.1, .1, I get 0 0.4762. So what number are we getting close to in the middle? 0.5. Awesome. We approach 0.5. From the left side, we're getting closer and closer to 0.5, and we're getting closer and closer to 0.5 on the right side. So the limit as x approaches 1 would be 0.5. Awesome. Next page, it gives us the graphs. So we're going to find our limits according to the graph. So here, the limit of f of x as x approaches 2. Are we approaching the same number? No. So what would our limit be? does not exist. But we could say the limit of f of x as x approaches to from the positive direction, so coming from the right side, what would our y value be here? 1. So we could split our limit up into the positive 2 and negative 2. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the negative direction, so coming from the left, what y value are we approaching? Negative 1. All right, next example. So the limit of g of x as x approaches 4, what value are we approaching as x goes to 4? Three, awesome. Our graph or our limit doesn't care what value exists at x equals four, it just cares about how the graph looks. So our values get closer and closer to three from the left and from the right side. So our limit as x goes to four would be three. If this question asked me for what's g of four, what would g of four be? Five. So because we have this point up here, g of four would be five, but the limit doesn't care about that point. It cares about how the graph looks, what you're coming, what value you're going to from the left side and from the right side. In the next example, the limit of h of x as x approaches three. What do we think? Does not exist because our graph is going to two different values as we approach three. So let's split it up. Let's say the limit of h of x as x approaches three from the positive direction, so coming from the right side, it would be three, awesome. And then the limit of h of x as x approaches three from the negative direction, that would be one, perfect. In the next example, it doesn't give us the graph. Let's put it in our graphing calculator and see what it will look like. So y equals 1 over x. So if I click the graph button, my graph looks like this. We could have graphed that by hand by knowing our vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote and plugging in a couple points. So you could always graph it by hand. So the limit as x approaches 0 would be what? 
Does our graph approach the same value? No, so what would our limit be? Does not exist. But let's split it up. Let's say the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the positive direction, so coming from the left side, what's our y value going to? Positive infinity, perfect. And the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the negative direction, where's our graph going to? Negative infinity. Awesome. We could put in values. 0 would be the number in the middle. So you'd want to plug in like negative 0.99. You could plug in negative 0.9. And then 0 0.001 and 0 0.01. Plug in values and see what you get. So we get negative 1.11, negative 1.01. We plug in 0 0.001, we get 1,000. And then when we plug in 0 0.01, we get 100. Are these approaching the same number? No, they are not. We're going to do one more together. So bonus example. Let's say my graph looked like this. Actually, if we had the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. So our graph would look like this. So as x approaches 0, what would our limit be? Infinity. Our graph approaches infinity from the left side and the right side. So our limit would be to infinity. So if we split this up, if we ask for the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive direction of 1 over x squared, this would be infinity and the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative direction. This would also be infinity. So because they approach the same value, our limit as x approaches 0 would be infinity.